everyone. How are you? Welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel. I am I, I, I'm just floored that we are at episode 260. No, yeah, 263 or 4? 64. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for uh, spending some time with us. Thank you for being here in the live chat and the live stream if some of you are um, able to watch uh, this as we're recording it and live. The last couple of weeks have been absolutely insane. <laughs> I have survived. I thrived. We came through all in one piece. Rebecca came down. She spent uh, a week here over the weekend for Fibrous West, which is the second largest fiber festival for fiber arts here in southwest, uh, south, southwestern um, British Columbia. <laughs> Where do I live? Um, it was amazing. It was a wonderful weekend and uh, we had a lot of fun. And then my brother and sister-in-law were here later in the week um, to say hello. It was the tail end of their spring break. My kids were already back to school, but we were able to get together and spend some time together. So it's been just a marathon. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this coming weekend is Easter and it's a long weekend. I'm looking forward to some quiet. We're taking the kids to a Whitecaps game, which is uh, Major League Soccer. And the rest of the time we're just quiet, quiet. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, for those who are new here, thank you so much for checking out the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving the show a chance. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment to like and subscribe, that would be amazing. There's a little icon down here in the corner that you can click that will help you to subscribe. Um, we talk mostly about hand spinning, spinning, making our own yarn, but we do talk a lot about sweater knitting and fitting sweaters and all that kind of stuff as well. So we've got kind of a, a nice mix of things. I think what we'll do, we have a very big show today. I am going to just have a look at sort of the order of things. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of things that are coming up in the community that are sort of ongoing so that you guys were all sort of up to date and, and knowing what was going on. I have something very, very special to share with you from Rebecca. I will try to get through it without getting really tearful and crying, although I won't be able to hear the music, so that will help. <laughs> and then I have some uh, works in progress that I wanted to share with you that are brand new that has sort of re kickstarted and re, re um, gotten me invigorated, if you will, uh, to pull out my knitting again and, and work on my knitting. As you can see, there's something back here that we need to talk about. So some really exciting things to share with you. And I wanted to say an extra special happy birthday to Dana. She's one of our long, long time community members. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day, Dana. It looks like um, she got a new spindle. Um, Today's my birthday and I found out that I have a Woodland Woodworks spindle coming to me. That's amazing. What a perfect gift for you. Um, that's wonderful. So thank you for being here, you guys, in the live chat. It's so good to see you. Chat had kind of blown up before I even got started. I was seeing her reading and then all of a sudden it was 10 o'clock and I was like, oh my goodness, I have, to, I have to start. I have to stream. So without further ado, let's get into the show and I would encourage you to hold on to your what what is that saying? Hold on to your hold on to your seat because we've got something fun. <laughs> That's a little bit different. So, yeah, expect something different. I'll see you guys on the other side. I know it's short, I know it's sweet, but it's quick, 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 and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, Rebecca and I put it together one evening when she was here and we, we couldn't stop laughing. It was actually really hard to record. <laughs> so as you guys know, Rebecca was here. Um, she was uh, here for a week. She is my other half um, on Wool and Spinning now. She is... Um, um, uh, hosting the wool circle. Um, there were some changes. Uh, I posted things last week. There were some changes to the Patreon tiers to sort of reflect um, where we hope to go 
moving forward. So if you missed that post, please have a look at patreon.com and just look at the post feed and it's there. It's for everyone um, to read through. Um, it doesn't affect um, a ton of people, but it does affect a few. And I just want to say an extra special thank you to those who continue to support the show and support the work here. Rebecca and I spent quite a lot of the time while she was here dreaming about the future and sort of putting on our entrepreneurial hat, if you will, I'm really thinking about like what would happen if I wonder if um, you know things that we want to create things we want to do and um, it's when we have the support from you guys it means that we can actually make this stuff a reality so yeah it's uh, it's great to be able to do that now I forgot my copy of the book in the other room and I meant to grab it but for book club right now we are reading The Secret River um, by Kate Grenville it is a um, historical novel about the founding of Australia um, we wanted to do something that had a different focus uh, a different perspective than a North American author we've done a lot of North American and British authors over the last few years and we wanted to do something a little bit different so I encourage you to pick up a copy read it hop onto the Slack channel under hashtag books and our next meeting won't actually be until April 24th just because of Easter falling in here so we thought we would take a bit longer to read read a bigger chunk and we'll meet uh, April 24th at 12 noon Pacific 8 p.m. GMT uh, and Becca is the host of that. So thank you as always to Becca for, for that. So that is our book club right now. Now I've got some stuff to, to discuss with you that's upcoming, that's um, things to look forward to in April from Wool and Spinning from Rebecca and I. But I think before we do that, we should maybe give Rebecca the spotlight for a moment. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this and uh, I will see you on the other side.
I know it was quite long, but I thought that Rebecca just did an amazing job putting that together. And I really wanted to be able to show that here on the podcast. We were going to save it for the wool circle, but uh, we talked about it. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. She did a beautiful job. The music is a montage of Scott Buckley's work. So um, I've linked um, him at the end of the show and also in the down bar down below so that you can find his music. And if you're like my kids, just go to Spotify and then find This Is Scott Buckley, which is his playlist, and you can just press play and listen to all of his music. Thanks, you guys. Uh, Kelly says that video made me very happy. Dana says that was really special. Christine says thanks for sharing. Loved it. That looked like a really lovely few days together. Thanks, you guys. It was awesome. Everything music incredible, too. Absolutely. So thank you, you guys. Um, so Fibers West for me, um, so Rebecca and I spent Friday looking around. We spent some time in the marketplace. Um, what I'm going to do is just put together kind of the thing, what I, what I purchased and, uh, what, what we did with my works in progress. Cause it just kind of makes sense that they all go together. Um, so let me just flip cameras for a moment. Um, so I've got this little pile of, of treasures here. I didn't buy any fiber. Um, I have a stash. It's big. I need to spin through it. That's part of my goal for this year. And next year is to really start to pare down what I have. Um, I've got some very intentional projects that I'm wanting to work on and wanting to work toward and, and really getting things, getting things done. But I did buy some yarn and part of that was I felt really inspired by a few things. I really was excited by some of the things that I saw. I really wanted to support Catherine of Small Bird Workshop. So I did buy two sweater quantities of yarn from her, but it's not a massive amount of yarn and they're for very specific projects. So I'll share with you the first thing. Um, this Haynes Creek, I, for whatever reason, I just fell in love with the color. I don't know why. It's kind of a washed out rose pink. It's not a great color for me. Um, like up next to me, it's sort of ho-hum. And, um, but I kept saying to Rebecca, like, I just, I really like it. I really want it. I can, I can do something with it. And she's like, well, I, I guess. And she, <laughs> she was so kind about it. Anyhow, this is Haynes Creek Heathers. It's a DK weight yarn and Greta actually, um, she was with us as well. She bought a yarn that literally is this color. It's just a fantastic lime green color and it's a great color on her. It's her favorite color, it looks amazing. Anyhow, I, I was looking at this and I came back to it and I walked away and I came back to it and there was gold and there were other colors as well but I just felt like this was really speaking to me. Anyways. Against my better judgment, I bought a, a sweater's quantity of it. And I sort of had in mind to do, I think it's called the Winter's Beach Cardigan. Is that what it's called? It's by Andrea Maori. I've been wanting to make it for a long time, but I have yarn in my stash for it. So I was feeling a little bit guilty. Anyways, we got home. Kelly says she really likes Haynes Creek. It's a really nice uh, workhorse yarn. That's really good to know. Ke uh, Lisa says I love that color. And so when we got home, I said to Rebecca, what if I put it with something? What if I put it with another yarn and I, with the intention of, of um, using up some of my hand spun stash, especially if there's some yarn in there that would really bring, you know, um, would really kind of help help the, the pink to not be quite so overwhelming on me, like the quite so like, rah. So, um, I knew that I had this yarn in my stash. This was a combo spin from several years ago. It's a Three Waters Farm braid with an unlabeled um, fiber that I spun up that was, um, uh, they were all Falkland. And so I had these three um, skeins that I had spun from them. This was the first spin that I pulled off of my Ashford E Spinner 3. And I wasn't super happy with the spin. I had rushed it. I hadn't nicely prepped the fiber. But when we got home, I started pulling out yarn and pulling out stash and I found these skeins and I was like, I bet you they would work with the pink. So if I go to the big camera for just a minute so that you can really get a sense of the colors, um, they really work really well together. So as soon as I brought them downstairs and I showed Rebecca, she was like, Yes, because I tried a few before other skeins of hand spun and she's like, oh, and I was like, yeah, it doesn't work. And she's like, no, you're right. It's too cool. And so then I found this and it just felt like I had, you know, hit the jackpot. It was meant to be. I've been looking for something for this yarn for the combo spin 
and really not having a lot of, of luck. So after I made that match and figured that out, I felt really pleased. And so I, I knew exactly what sweater I was thinking about. So this is a swatch for Trinigan, which is another Andre Maori pattern. And it's mosaically knitted. It's very, it looks very similar to the Shifty. Like from a distance, you almost kind of think it's the Shifty-esque, but it's not. Um, these are all knit stitches and it's just a lovely, simple pattern. It's a very, um, blocky oversized cardigan the idea is to wear it with like 15 inches of positive ease very similar to the cat bells which we'll talk about later in the show that's why i'm wearing mine today and um you know it's funny how like you get this little square of, of fabric after you swatch and you're sort of like oh i was thinking it would be a little bit more it would work a bit better. And then I was like, but this is only a section of the hand spun. Like here, I've got the entire braid and there's places in the, in the yarn that is very, very similar to the pink where you won't get such high contrast. So right now you're seeing a really super high contrast between, between the two yarns. But uh, you know, when you look at the cardigan and you look at the, the photos that Andrea modeled of the cardigan, cause she uses a blue, for the main color and then and then a spin cycle multicolored very similar to what we obtain when we do our hand spun as the contrast and it's a lot of color and it's a very bright sweater however um, it's really effective and so um, I, I did my little swatch I was a good little swatcher however this fabric is a little bit too thin it's too open and I knew that it was pushing it with the needle size called for in the pattern. I knew that I was kind of at the top end of what these two yarns could do. So I just need to go down half a size and see if I get a slightly better fabric. So yeah, thank you, Shauna. She says, I love that combination, those colors I love. Um, and so the, yeah, so the cardigan is a drop shoulder. Um, it's meant to kind of fit like the cat bells. Why don't we talk about that next, actually? Um, the cat bells, let me just move this out of the way is this cardigan that I'm wearing right now. And I'll just move back from the camera a little bit. Basically what you do is you start at the top seam up here and you uh, knit down, uh, you attach at the underarm and then you keep knitting down. So as you can see here, we'll talk about this yarn in just a moment. Um, as you can see here, you have your, your back piece that goes all the way across you knit down to a certain uh, to a certain length and then you go back pick up for your left front and your right front you knit down and then you attach it all and keep on knitting so this is the cat bells cardigan as well yes i am wearing it yes i am knitting it <laughs> i wear this cardigan so much like just an unbelievable amount i probably wear it two or three times a week I cycle between the same cardigans. I, I do, I wear the cat bells. I wear my Solaris that was heavily modified and I wear, which is on my Ravelry projects page. And I also wear my a day, uh, by Cirilla Rose. I wear those three Solaris is by, um, the Barocco design team. And I wear those three cardigans like on, on repeat. Um, Rebecca can, can attest. I just wear them over and over and over again. Part of the reason is that it just works with my wardrobe. On Woolen Spinning Radio this month, we talked a lot about uh, clothing philosophy. Me and Rebecca, we talked about feeling a little bit frumpy and a little bit kind of um, not super intentional about our clothing. And we sort of started to get into that conversation. If that is of interest to you, Woolen Spinning Radio is available on all major podcast feeds and podcast places, wherever you find your podcast. Um, I have often wished that I had another Cat Bells and one that wasn't just a natural shade that was actually a color. And when I saw the green, the new Tweety green yarn that Dizdaro Ranch brought in, I just swooned. And um, this is a very interesting yarn. It is, let me just pull up the photo um, so that I can read off the statistics of this yarn and be accurate because I always feel like when I talk about Dizdaro Ranch's yarn, I always feel like I'm not accurate <laughs> and it's, I, I don't mean to, it's just, they have a lot of yarn and they do a lot of different things. 
So Disdero Ranch, this is their CVM Co. So capital C, capital V, capital M, CVM, like the sheep, Co. Um, and so what it is, is it's a 50% CVM wool, 50% homegrown Coriadale. So it's um, Lori's own sheep. The CVM, I think, is local. I think it's sourced from multiple farms. It's not just hers, I, I, I think. Um, and this is the worsted Aran weight one. So when you purchase the yarn, um, if you if you have a look at this yarn and you look at it um, and you and you want to get some, be sure, yeah, be sure when you get it home that uh, you wash it before you swatch it and before you start knitting with it. Um, and so Rebecca, she was looking at it after I brought it home and she was like, yeah, I think, I think you should wash it. But I'd already started the sweater because I didn't have time to wash it and start the sweater. It wouldn't have been dry. So I actually washed this first part of the sweater and then once, and it dried really quickly, thank goodness. We had a couple of warmer days um, over the course the, earlier this week and I'll show you what I did in the meantime. And then I kept on knitting and you can actually see um, it's probably not going to come through on the camera, but the second skein here is not washed yet. Um, and so it, you can actually see in real life, <laughs> in real life, there's a, there's a line in the sweater uh, between the, it's right here, between the washed and the unwashed. This is slightly darker. This is slightly lighter. This is fold. It's beautiful. It's filling in the filling in the spot, the gaps in the in the garter stitch. This isn't, and so it folds beautifully, and it really has a lovely sproing to it. It's quite strong, but it's lofty and um, and it's quite soft. So this is a tweed that they just started making. It's available in four colors: the green, there's a lilac-y purple color, a blue, and shoot Rebecca what was the fourth color there was a fourth color anyhow um they're doing it at a local mill it's beautiful and um, I will keep you posted as it wears and how it wears and and what uh, what it feels like it's also available as a natural color so you can get the dyed in the wool so this is dyed in the wool and then it has the t natural tweety bits are added in natural colors and it's dyed in the wool and then you can get the natural color which some of them this isn't um, her yarn this is my friend Anne's flock um, which is also CVM Coriadale um, crossbreeds and uh, milled at the same mill for my friend Lynn of West Coast Color very confusing Lynn of West Coast Color and Lori of Disdero Ranch live next door to each other. So there's a lot of crossover between the two of them. But that is my new cast on. I felt really inspired. I felt excited about my knitting again. I got really, really bogged down with um, the pressed flowers. And part of the reason for that was fit. What I really need to do is rip back and make the arm sky longer, bigger, more, uh, give, give the sweater more space. Um, and so that would entail ripping back uh, the both of the shoulder seams, ripping back all the short rows, and adding more length, and then and then uh, doing all of that again. It feels very overwhelming. And what I really need to do is take the uh, take it on a on a trip with us when we've got a long travel day, and I can just sit and work on it and focus on it and feel like I've got lots of time. There's no rush, and I can just plug away at it. So I will pick pressed flowers back up eventually, um, but I do need a little bit of a break from it. So um, that that is that is that. Now the other thing that I cast on was I was very excited about this. This is gathering yarn as well, also from uh, uh, Catherine of Smallbird. Um, this is gathering yarn. This is Brook Farm fingering, and I saw this this color and I just I had to have it. <laughs> there was no other reason and so these two I needed four skeins two of each um, the yardage on these is quite significant um, it is it doesn't have it on the outside where is the yardage 420 meters for a hundred grams and so I saw these two and then and then it was just a matter of picking the contrast color originally I picked just neutral gray that was the same value as the coral but Rebecca and I thought it was a bit blah and then I put cream with it, but I always put cream with everything. And so I thought, no, I want something more 
dramatic, a little bit more moody, a little bit more interesting. And so we went with the dark brown natural shade and it just seemed to really work beautifully. So I cast, so I, I swatched, I, I did do a swatch and I swatched for, where did it go? I've got all these things. This makes me feel like the old podcast. Do you guys remember the old podcast when I, when I had everything around me and I would like be scrambling for everything? This is like back to the old style. Trying to have all my projects, show you guys everything, get everything organized. All right, this is the moment of truth. I did swatch, here's my swatch. On the bottom is the swatch with three millimeter needles and on the top is 2.75 millimeter needles. This was off by about four stitches and this ended up getting gauge. I thought for sure it would be the opposite. Um, that I would get gauge with the 2.75, but in, in fact, um, the yarn bloomed a huge amount and it's just created the most amazing fabric on top and bottom. I could have gone with either, but I did go with the fabric that gave me gauge, just honestly for ease more than anything, especially after everything that happened with pressed flowers and really wanting to intentionally finish that. So, This is just started, it's just beginning, but this is called The Newspaper by Hohi Locatelli. And basically you have brioche all the way down over the entire sweater and it changes, um, there's like stripes almost, where you have like sections where you have the brioche in one orientation and then below it's in the other orientation. So it creates like these blocks, like a newspaper. And so I've just started this and uh, when I get to a little bit further along, I'm actually going to go back and do the neckline right away to make sure that I like how all of this looks and what, what the sweater actually looks like before carrying on and putting in so much time and so much effort into the card, into the sweater that um, I wouldn't want to go back and rip it out. So. Um, this is on bigger needles so that I can show it to you guys and show you sort of the beginnings of this of this really cool sweater. This is going to be a long-term project. This is not very fast knitting. As everybody always says with brioche, you do every row twice. So it is a lot of knitting. But I'm really enjoying it and I'm I'm at the point I've mentioned this on the podcast before. I've really found with my knitting, I, I want to knit things that are a little bit more complicated. Like I'm finding that knitting cat bells again, this is my third time round knitting this sweater. It's great for a mindless knit. It's great to be able to just shoot across the rows super, super fast. That's only about four hours of knitting, but, um, it's not complicated and it's not super interesting or engaging. And I would rather work on a sweater at this point in my sort of knitting career that's a little bit more complicated that takes a bit longer because I feel like I'm being a bit more challenged. I can really, by the end of the sweater, I'll really understand brioche increases, how it works, how you shift things, shaping, all of that kind of stuff. So um, I'm really enjoying this thus far. This is a couple of evenings of knitting thus far, just in bed for 45 minutes or so. So it's not been that bad in terms of um, being really, really, really slow. And I'm sort of saving Trinigan to work to cast on just because I need to do another swatch. Um, and I'm gonna have to go down, like I said, and maybe I'll have that swatch done by next show. The other thing that I wanted to mention was I finally, finally got to meet Helen of uh, Maudsley Fiber Arts. She is based in Winnipeg. She is an amazing, just a lovely, lovely human being. She is so kind. Um, she was so lovely and, and I love her card. Sawdust is my glitter. That just sums it up. She's obviously the coolest person ever. So we went into her uh, booth first thing in the morning on Friday and I saw these and I was sold. I walked out with it. I usually don't knit thing. I, I usually don't um, uh, purchase things on the first time round. Like I usually, we, we do the round and then I go back and I'm very strategic about what I purchase. But I was like, nope, it's mine. So for those who don't know what this is, it's a ring distaff. Um, it, it hangs on your finger and you wrap your fiber around. There's several different ways to secure your fiber onto the distaff and then you can spin. So I'm going to be playing with this this summer. This is not the last time you will see this, 
But uh, in the meantime, this beautiful little distaff. If I hold it in front of my face, you can see. Um, it's just incroyable. So I'm really excited to play with this. It has a nice feel to it too. Like when you run your finger along the wood, um, it has an ever so slight, not stick, but it, it's not super smooth. It's, it's got a really nice finish to it. And um, she includes in her packages how to care for your wood items, which is wonderful because then um, you know what to, what to do. Um, this wooden item has been buffed with a blend of coconut oil, walnut oil, and beeswax. Over time, the wood may dry and may need to be buffed with a bit of an oil or a wax. And, and I have certainly found that with some of my other stuff. So I'm super excited about that. And then the other thing that I got from her was a support spindle because, you know, support spindles. So Diana got one of these as well. And uh, Rebecca did too. And I was, I was already playing with this with my Crafty Jacks Rolex with all the sari silk. And I think there's sari silk and Polworth and I can't remember what, what all is in them. I don't have the pack right here. But I have been working away on this spin very, very slowly. And uh, organic Polworth and, and sari silk. And I've been just swapping out spindles as I get to them um, uh, to spin these up. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm about a third of the way through now. I haven't been like really intentionally working on, on this stuff um, because there's just been a lot going on, as you guys can imagine. So that's it there. Super fun. I can't really spin it because I've got fiber on here, but lovely, lovely little spindle. And like I said, Diana got, got a couple as well. There you go. Very cool. So thank you, Helen. Um, and thank you for, um, for saying hello. Cause she initiated the conversation to say hello. We were in the booth, but then, but then she initiated starting to chat. Um, Eve asked how a cardigan that's oversized stays on. I find this one stays on really, really well. And I think part of that is that the neck opening at the back neck is actually quite small and it comes over quite high on your neck. And so for this one with the drop shoulder, it works really well. And this is the same shape and the same design uh, that the Trinigan is as well. And so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that I'll be able to, that the two sweaters will be very interchangeable and uh, very useful. I'm hoping that I wear it. It feels like a lot of color. As you can see, I don't tend to wear a lot of color. This feels very bright. <laughs> but maybe I'll be able to do it. Maybe I'll be able to hold, wear it, pull it off. I'll wear it on the podcast at the very least. There you go. So I could always over dye it and wash it with gray. If I really don't wear it, I could always sell it on Etsy as well. Spinning. Uh, let's take a quick break here and just talk really quickly about what's coming up in the community. Um, so this month, as you guys know, through 2023, we are doing the year of color, everything that's in the wool circle, spinning pearls, which is the monthly teaching content that I provide patrons of the show is all around color. So this month for April, we are looking at contrast of value. We're studying right now the contrasts of color and um, we're now at contrast of value. We've done contrast of hue. Now we're doing contrast of value next month. We're doing, I can't remember contrast of something. And uh, yesterday on the wool circle, Rebecca introduced wool combing and blending color with her wool combs. It was really fun to see her working through her process. And um, as things go on, she's going to be refining her, uh, her technique. I'm working on my technique. I'm, I've got a fleece that I need to pull out to start combing myself. And I thought now is a great time to do that. All of the links are in the show notes. And um, if you have trouble finding anything, please leave a message for me in the down bar in the comments, and I will definitely get back to you and post those links for you. Coming up later in the month, we always spend the last Tuesday of every month applying our learning and looking at how we can apply our spinning, uh, the theory to our actual spinning and how we can use this stuff. And there will be a premiere on the last Tuesday of this month for everybody. Everyone's uh, welcome. It is a public stream on the last Tuesday of April. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for supporting the work here and for doing all of this, for being here. It's been a lot of fun. The year of color has totally taken off and uh, it's been really cool to see it grow. Okay, so for spinning, I actually got a huge amount done on my toothy spin. 
We have been watching the book of Bubba Fett and as we've been working through it, I have been making myself during that time work on this toothy spin. So I have two more nests to go and I will be done the second, uh, the second hundred grams. And so that'll be 200 grams spun. Most of it is still on bobbins except for this little baby skein that isn't really a baby, but you know, it's baby ish. Um, except for this skein that has been plied and washed and then I'll ply up another skein and that will give me two skeins to start to do some sampling with. So my plan is to ply up the second skein, get enough yardage to have something to actually be able to do something with on the loom, try a whole bunch of different sets. And I wanna try a herringbone twill, broken twill, straight, one, two, three, four, straight draw twill and have a few different fabrics that I then have something to draw on in terms of what I want to do with this. My plan, this is a two ply fingering weight. Um, it came out at roughly uh, 22, 20 to 22 wraps per inch because it really bloomed when it washed. And my plan is to basically create what I'm wearing, but woven. So I would like to create like a boxy cardigan type oversized sweater that feels a little bit more like a jacket. I'm even thinking about using the selvages of the woven fabric for the selvages of the opening of the sweater. And um, my mom and I were actually talking about it on the weekend because she's like, you would, she's, she was saying, my mom's a beautiful seam, seamstress, uh, sewist, and uh, she's really got when it comes to this kind of stuff, I default to her. I'm like, mom, what would you do? Mom, tell me what you would do in this situation. What would mom do? And um, she uh, said to me like, why not just use the selvages? If you like your selvages and they look nice, she's like, why don't you use your selvage as this outer edge? And then you would have your sleeve to um, ease in. You'd have a seam across here with some um, stay tape and uh, you could put on um, you could put on uh, pockets and then of course um, something along the bottom to finish off the fabric at the bottom. So um, some sort of a, a hem. Anyways, my mom had all these great ideas. The idea of not putting on a button, of uh, uh, putting on a band up here would save on yardage if I, because usually those are done on the bias. So she's just, she was just spitballing with me some different ideas and some things that we could think about, which was really, really helpful. So, um, and the other thing she said was like, let's surge it. She's like, you know, honestly, woven fabric, it would, it would close up your seams. You could surge it. Um, we'll get the serger up and running. So I feel really excited about this project now and that is what has lit a bit of a fire under my butt to keep on spinning and keep on making fabric. Because the other thing is once I get those samples done, I'll know how much more I need to spin. Um, I also just realized that the if I look right at the camera, the yarn is the same color as my eyes. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> uh, random. So. I'm excited. I'm, I'm kind of feel fired up about this again. And that, that has been really positive. I've been, I've been excited to work on it. It's not my favorite spin. There's a lot of different staple lengths in the fiber. It makes it a little bit tedious to spin this week. I thought what I would do for the show next week is to actually get some video of uh, what it looks like spinning it because it's a little bit of combination worsted woolen long draw, continuous backwards kind of spinning just because there's so much going on in the fiber. Mm. That's great, Christine. She said, I just, I actually just worked my rigid heddle loom this week for the first time since before COVID. I'm weaving a rag rug with an old duvet cover as weft and four ply cotton for the warp. That sounds amazing. I've got to get it finished as daughter number one is coming home for Easter and we've got guests coming on Friday for dinner. So the loom needs to be put away. That's awesome. Does anybody have any plans for the long weekend? I know for some of you, it's a religious holiday and you'll be, you'll be celebrating the religious holiday. Um, for those, uh, who don't, you know, um, for all of you, what, what are your plans? What do you guys work, um, doing this, this weekend, having that extra day? Some people have two extra days. So, uh, I would love to, uh, 
I would love to hear. Rebecca says, I've started brioching. It's a bit of an obsession. <laughs> the problem with brioche is once you start, you really start to enjoy it. And I actually don't find it that slow. And I really like the fabric that I get. So for me, it's worth it to keep on going. The other thing that I wanted to share with you. So Eve had asked about teaching um, at Fibers West. It went really, really well. My students were incredible. It was the first time that I had taught unbraided. So um, Katrina and I had kind of come up with the general overview and the general idea for the workshop, but it was a different thing to actually have it like plan something three years ago and then to actually go back, go through all my notes and then actually do said workshop. That was a really interesting situation to be in because it wasn't like I had taught it previously or that I had taught it multiple times and kind of knew what I was going into and kind of like, you know, riding a bike a little bit. So this was a little bit stressful in the sense that I'd never taught it before. Um, I'd never taught at Fibers West before, which was a really good experience. And uh, I wasn't sure how much or how little spinning we would actually get done in a eight hour day. So my students started arriving around nine. The workshop officially started at 930. We taught until 5 p.m., but honestly, everybody in all the workshops were packed up and leaving around 4.30. And I think the reason is that every, you just get tired. Like by the end of the day, you're ready to get home. It's the second day of the festival. Most people have been there on the day before on the Friday as well. People came and go, came and went. They did some shopping. They came back and spun for a bit. They left again. They came back a bit. So it was really nice to have that flow. There was a lot of theory to talk through and a lot of theory to share from the book. Uh, we went through the color wheel. We went through, you know, analogous colorways, complement colorways, colorways with a, a fairly significant amount of white in them. So we're talking about braided fiber, um, you know, hand dyed combed top that you would buy like at a festival that always feels when you're a new spinner like a big learning curve and, and even Dorothy mentioned this morning to me when I was chatting with her uh, you know that she spun a recent braid and no matter what she did with the yarn she just hated it and she ended up composting it so you know sometimes if you're a brand brand new spinner that can be completely disheartening so that's a lot of what we were talking about in the workshop and a lot of what we were covering one of the things that I wanted to do in the workshop was have a braid there to show people what I do when I first unbraid the fiber and lay it out, how I lay it out on a dining room table or maybe on a bed. And um, I really, I do it the way I was taught. Like my spinning mentors, Diana Twist and Kim McKenna from years and years ago, um, they kind of taught me what they do in their process and I still do it and I pass it on to others. Um, and so because of that, I, um, I, you know, I, I, I thought that was a great place to start in the morning. And then I got there to the festival and I was like, I forgot my braid at home of fiber that I was going to show them how I do that with. So I ran over to Katrina's booth and Lisanne was already there for the morning. And I was like, I need to get a braid of fiber. So I ended up getting, um, what's it called? Uh, car. Carmen, Car, Carmana, oh, I can never say that word, Carmana Giant um, colorway from Katrina. This is like my favorite colorway that Katrina has right now. I just absolutely love it. And I'm going to do a little poll in the live stream. Can you guys, based on how I have broken it up, can you guys, do you guys know how I am going to spin this? And I, I had a whole slideshow presentation to show you guys about how to do this and what this all looks like. We will do it next time because we're just running out of time. It just, the show gets to be too long and I start to run out of a voice. So this is all divided up now. Thank you, Eve, you win. Uh, I am doing a three ply fractal. I have already started spinning what would be, the, what I would consider in my mind, the second bobbin. So the first, um, the first bobbin, that I always like to do, and I didn't do it this time round, but I like to spin the first bobbin first, and that's the one that spun through the colorway end to end. And so that's this one here. And for whatever reason, while we were in book club and we were chit chatting and I just grabbed one of my nests of fiber and I started on what I would consider the second bobbin, which is three uh, nests spun end to end. So you spin the three net, uh, nests, you've divided them up. So you, you take this, you divide it into three, and that's this fiber here. And you spin these end to end. So this one's already been started. Spin, spin, spin. Make sure you're spinning from the right direction. 
that you're starting at the same end every single time. And then for the third bobbin, I divided it up. I think I have eight nests in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, no, six. Yeah, six. I divided this one up six times and I'll spin from the same end each time, end to end to end. And we'll talk about on the next show um, how that looks in the yarn and what's going on by splitting your fiber multiple ways like this. So we'll save that for next time. But I love this colorway. I wanted to give a plug for Katrina um, about this fiber because it's one of my favorite colorways. Several people came into the booth and I could see that they were purchasing it. Somebody asked me how I would spin it and I told her and she went and bought a braid, which is awesome. So I'm excited to spin that. Um, it'll come out quite, the, the overarching feel of it when it's done will be quite green. Um, but there's all this gorgeous gold yellow in here and these gorgeous forest greens. I seem to be on a yellow and green kick again. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm always on a yellow kick, but combining yellow with green is relatively recent. Relatively recent. <clears throat> Me too, Christine. I like them too. She says one to three to six. That makes the maths part of me happy. I like fractals to be in multiples. I do as well. I like them to be symmetrical. And part of the reason for that is that it creates two mini skeins that are the same. And I just, I like how that works. I like one, four, eight the best um, because then it's two identical uh, um, mini skeins. If you want to do like socks or if you want to do something where you have two skeins. Um, one, three, six is not ideal because the, the, the middle colorway, the, sorry, the middle color repeat, if I'm missing, if I'm losing people, it's fine. Um, we'll explain, we'll talk about this next show, but the middle color repeat gets divided in half. And so you kind of interrupt it, but if you start, so it, it makes two, uh, basically fraternal twins. <laughs> Because your second skein is starting in a different place from your first from your first skein. So if I've lost you, um, it's okay. We'll talk about it next show. So that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm doing. I don't think there's anything else. I haven't made any progress on my fin. Um, I'm still processing this and lock popping it and whatnot. I have been intentionally, while the kids are working on schoolwork, sitting there doing locks. And so I'm about halfway through the next batch of fiber to make my next bat and then I'll spin that up and then I'll do it again and I'll keep on going until I have enough to ply and then Bob's your uncle. So what do we have next? What do we need to do next? I think we need to do community participation. So let's do that. I will see you guys on the other side. Yeah, if people, Alberto was just mentioning in the chat, um, if, if people haven't seen Felicia's course, uh, Spinning Dyed Fibers, she goes through how to make a fractal and her explanation is really excellent. So we'll talk about it on the next show, but if people are curious in the meantime, definitely go check that out. Um, all right, so this is all the stuff that goes on in our community throughout the week. It's not all of it, because I would we would be here until next Sunday if, um, if I were to share with you everything that people are working on. But um, here is a smattering of work. So I wanted to start off same as last time with what you guys are doing for the year of color. There is a uh, channel on the Slack channel, which is the which is where the wool and spinning community is housed, is on the Slack channel. So when you go to Patreon and you see the spinning circle tier, the Slack channel that's part of that is the community. So if you want to jump in with the, these conversations, um, that is where the majority of the chatter happens. Um, and if you have any questions, just ask me. But there's a channel called hashtag year of color on there and also in the Ravelry group that's um, year of color 2023. This is where a lot of this work is being shared. So if you're missing it and you're part of those communities, that's where you need to look. 
um, because it's just sort of orientating ourselves and figure out where to find stuff. So, and if you're ever wondering and you feel like you're missing stuff, just send me a note, ask me, Rebecca can help you as well on the Slack channel. She's at Rebby J R E B B I E J A Y E. So, and you can ask either of us and honestly, anybody in there that's posting a lot, they'll know and they'll be able to help you as well. All right, this is from Amanda. I have quite a few from Amanda because I got super behind on sharing what she's been working on for Year of Color and I really wanted you guys to see just so that you could begin to see the depth and the breadth that we can take our sampling to. So these are all two gram samples that she's been doing and this is continuing on the shade train with cool yellow. So this is a cool yellow that she's working from for part of her palette. She picked a palette that she wanted to work with of primaries and she's been working up and spinning them all up. And she did a shade study from the cool yellow 100% hue across to brown, across to black, and across to gray. And look at the differences and what you can create just changing what, what your shade is on the other side, whether it's gray or, or brown or black. My personal favorite are those ones that are created in the gray and the black, but I love these ready browns. They're just incredible. Also from Amanda, but this time with warm yellow. So a little bit more orangey almost feeling, kind of a little bit more like sunlight. Um, feels, feels bright, feels happy. We wanna start looking at sort of how colors are making us feel when we're thinking about value. Not quite as moody, not quite as dark. I love those greens that are created toward the gray, um, the gray end of the shade. And then these are them uh, how different are they? So, and here is a comparison of the cool yellow sets from earlier and the new warm yellow sets. You can really see how the combinations change, how muted or not the blended colors become. Isn't that incredible? Some of those colors that are like halfway along on the warm yellow side, oh, love those. So beautiful. That's monumental, Amanda. Lovely, says uh, Charlotte. Yeah, I love these. I, I just, these sets are so inspiring to me and I just desperately want to make them myself and I don't know if I'll have the time, but I'm just going to slowly plug away to have these sets. Having, seeing the photos is one thing and being inspired, but doing it yourself, highly recommend it. And if you feel like two grams is too much, do a one gram sample. Don't do as many, you know, you don't have to do it, uh, you, you don't have to shade it, um, you know, um, as you're working on these scales, you don't have to work on them so that they are, um, so that there's quite as many. You could always do, you know, 100%, 80, 20, 60, 40, 20, 80, 100. Like you don't have to do the, the sheer number of samples if you, if you feel like you, you can get a lot of the information by just doing a few. Um, but yeah, the egg yolk set is amazing. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Amanda, for sharing so openly all of the stuff that you're working on. I'm Lisa says, I'm a need that gr apple green by the yellow there. <laughs> yeah, at the top. Beautiful. Um, that would be the cool yellow with just 5% black. So that's just 5% in there. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, it's totally Lisa's color. Lisa wears, Lisa wears these colors incredibly. Uh, orange. Uh, apple green, the, the, these bright saturated colors. Lisa just looks incredible in them. Yeah, I love that we're all in different places and researching from different angles, says Rebecca, and I think that's what makes it so rich. This is from Sarah, this is her value scale. So I had shared my value scale already spun, and so I wanted to share this one that, that Sarah did that's still the carded fiber. So I'm excited to see um, hers once it's spun, but she used the same fleece and she dyed the black using gay wool dye, um, seven grams coal plus one gram of indigo to 50 grams of fleece. I'm happy with the color. Originally my black had a prominent pink undertone, which I didn't like. These, the colors are in 10% increments and I'm amazed when I put samples of colored blended fibers next to these grayscale value samples as I can actually see what approximate value they are. I had never considered this before. It's a great exercise. I agree, Sarah, and that's why I want everyone to do it. <laughs> if everybody could go ahead and do their value scale, that would be great. <laughs> it just, it, it, it deepens the conversation, if nothing else. Yes. 
It's true, Lisa. I speak truths. This is from Kathy, late to the party, but so much fun. Here's my CMYK color wheel, wheel and mud. Um, I don't think I included her mud photo, but it's basically a combination of all of the primaries. It was beautiful um, on white Shetland. Because I loved the mud so much, I made desaturated secondaries um, with the following ratios. I love the Rolex and I'm super curious if I will like the yarn. Now off to spin them all up. So Kathy, make sure you share another photo of this same orientation of fiber so that we can put them side by side and compare what they look like once they're spun. Beautiful work. This is from Dominique, another experiment for the contrast of hue. So contrast of hue we covered last month in March and people are still working on their samples and getting them spun. So please, please keep, keep spinning, <laughs> keep sharing, keep spinning. I alternated the colors while spinning for a minimal blending effect. Without surprise, the RYB has the maximal contrast with even spots that look almost black where the colors meet with less contrast with CMY and even less with the secondaries incredible then less contrast amazing yes i agree uh, alberto amazing work in colors everybody is just creating such incredible stuff and these little samples they're not that they they, they don't take long and so it's very very satisfying it's like potato chip spinning it's like a new a new type of potato chip just keep spinning, just keep spinning. This is from Gail. I'm a little late to the party on making my color wheel. This is my first time using the hand card, so it was great learning on, so, on several levels. I can see the blends I did first and that aren't as smooth as the ones towards the end. I did the grayscale as an afterthought for the day. Looking forward to blending a primary and a secondary with white and black, then spinning everything up. What a fun rabbit hole. These are, they're rabbit holes and you learn so much, but look at her beautiful color wheel. And that's the her mud in the middle there of the three primaries. Beautiful. This is from Susan. I have to press play. This is very exciting. Um, this, um, this plays through from photo one. So as I'm reading, I have labeled the photos so that you can keep up. Um, after doing the primary, secondary, and tertiary color wheels for both RYB and CYM, I decided to try the complementary and a tint and shade scale for each of the primaries. Photo one shows all the roll eggs. Photo two is the complements. Photo three shows the saturation decreased remarkably for the complements. Photo four shows that they became even more desaturated. And photo five shows the difference in saturated from the primaries when they were mixed from. And photo six shows the difference between the two mud mixes. And if you guys wanna pause here and you can read through all the details that Susan shares, it's just incredible. So thank you, Susan, for sharing all of that. Rebecca says, I feel like I'm creatively hyperventilating after a day of making a bunch of color samples. Totally. Um, this is from Crystal. Here is my color wheel. It was a fun exercise. That's beautiful, Crystal. Thank you so much for sharing. Beautiful colors that you were able to create. Love that, that ready magenta. That's just beautiful. All right, now for our general makes and shares. This is the stuff that goes on the community that's everything. So this isn't related directly to our year of color. I throw that all in year of color. This is the stuff that people are working on in the background all the time. And it's always incredible. This first one is from our very own Rebecca. Didn't have time to do proper photos, but we'll do that in April. The wheel, the wheel rig, rig it is finished. I have a matching hat and still have yarn that I want to use up. I can't wait to have the modeled photos on the show. Thank you, Rebecca. And I loved this photo of her. I thought it was just perfect. Just beautiful. Thank you, Rebecca. This is from Lisa. This is just a hoot. True to form for Lisa. I love this so much. Um, it's not a sweater, but roughly the same size. This is Romney spun two ply and made via Elizabeth Zimmerman's nether garment from the Knitting Almanac. I made three changes. First, I put an elastic waistband as I do not enjoy I-cord. Second, I made a front gusset and a fly so that he could go through the gate instead of over the hedge. And the recipient is grateful but refuses to model and it fits like a glove. Isn't that incredible, you guys? That right there, that is love. That was for her, her husband. Amazing. 
This one's from Susan. From inspiration to completion in about 10 months, I bought a retiring fiber artist. I gotta press play. Uh, a retiring fiber artist stash. And it was about three or more pounds of dyed and carded Colombian wool. It was bouncy, entirely non-itchy, and the colors were gorgeous. So I really wanted a sweater I knew I would wear. I had no idea how much yarn would turn out as I have very little experience with blending, but it evolved and again, it was what I had hoped for. The rest of the carded bats are going to wait until we're further into our year of color study. I'm excited to discover what I can make based on what I've learned so far and what we're going to learn. The pattern is White Mountain by Midori Hiroshi. Amazing. This is just incredible. Incredible. Thank you so much, Susan, for sharing. Amazing. Many swatches, one previously full knitted sweater and a frogged yoke later, I have pretty much what I had hoped for. Amazing. I know. Um, Lisa is a riot. You guys are commenting on the, on the comment. <laughs> this is from Sarah, who's just too cute for words. Um, I also have to press play. Uh, so I finally did a thing with the five yards of fabric that was supposed to be a blanket, but didn't work out as planned. I made myself something to wear. I'm super happy with how this turned out. And it is, was a bit of a trial and error and getting the armholes the way I wanted them. This vest is essentially three rectangles that are sewed together, plus two hems at the top and the bottom. I already want to make one out of cotton as this one is wool and it is a little warm for Florida, but I am wearing it anyway, despite it being 90 degrees outside. This may be my first woven garment, but it won't be my last. That's amazing, Sarah. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> yeah, that uh, saying is pretty hilarious. This is from Michelle, no, Laura, sorry. I'm, I'm skipping over Laura by accident. Uh, do you guys remember when I shared on the podcast um, the first one? It was the white to gray transition. So it's the one, if you look over on the, the uh, collection of photos, it's the one on the far left-hand side at the top. So your left-hand side at the top, I think, I hope. <laughs> Uh, everything is backwards for me. I finished my second juxtaposition. So the one that she's just finished is the one that's closest to me here, um, uh, nearest to me. Um, she's hugging her daughter and it's the one that she's wearing with the uh, beautiful maroon up at the top. This first one with the white to gray main color is my favorite, but the second one is not too bad either. I love the second one. Um, I still have a little bit of yarn left over, but not enough for a third. Isn't that, this is all hand spun. The main colors, the contrast colors, the whole thing. It's all hand spun, hand knit, color work. Amazing. It's so inspirational. I actually really want to make one of these based on Laura's, um, uh, based on what Laura's done here. I just think it's incredible what she did. Gracious, those sweaters are gorgeous. Oh my word, the pair of them. I know, right, you guys? I know. This is from Michelle, so, such a beautiful sweater. Um, new woolen spinning member. I bought my first wheel of Shack Ladybug in November of 2022, and I taught myself to spin. Thought I'd share my first project swin, uh, spin from Custom Woolen Mills Cotswold Roving in dark, uh, dark pink heather. This is the Trillium Cardigan by Michelle Wang. I'm so happy. Yes, you should be, it's amazing. This is incredible. First sweater. Do you guys remember what it felt like when you finished your first sweater spin and your first sweater knit? Like the whole thing was done, the whole kit and caboodle. Do you guys remember what that felt like? Oh, so great. Thank you, you guys. Thank you as always for sharing all that you do. Thank you for using the hashtag tag wool and spinning and use your hand spun so that other people can find our work and find the work that we do here at Wool and & Spinning and, and we'll maybe take a second glance and come on over to YouTube and have a look at the show and maybe join our community. The more of us there is, the more we'll start and the more that start, the more we can build. So um, it's all just a perpetual snowball avalanche and uh, the, more, the more that we um, sort of get the word out about what we do and share with others and get, the, get, get people who are, you know, um, interested in wool and fiber and cotton and plant-based fibers and spinning all the things um, it, it every little bit helps and and you know it just keeps on growing so that's amazing 
I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of weeks. I will see you back here, same time, same place, not next week, but the week after. I hope to have some swatching to share with you, hopefully, hopefully. And if not, at the very least, we'll have a discussion about fractals and we'll have a discussion about spinning this toothy fiber, which is not the easiest, but also incredibly enjoyable. So until next time, happy spinning, happy knitting, happy swatching, happy sampling. What are all the other things to say happy about? Happy weaving. Use your hands fun. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you to Anne, Sarah, Amanda, and Lisa. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much.